Hello, and how's it going? I am Nick here with the Babylon JS team, and I'm here to show you how to make a tune shader in the Babylon NME editor, or a node material editor. Now, if you can't tell, I love cartoons, um, and I especially love uh, uh, non-photorealistic rendering techniques, such as tune shaders uh, and the like. Um, but, so, let's show you what, I, what we'll be doing today. Uh, this is a tutorial by Roy Stan. Uh, he's a really skilled Unity engineer, and he made a breakdown of how to make a simple tune shader using uh, a two-tone diffuse coloring, a specular highlight with rim lighting. So uh, part one, we'll be going over the two-tone two uh, shading. Um, in part two, we'll go back and add the specular reflections, and so that'll be the shimmers of light that you see. And then in part three, I'll show you how to make the rim lighting uh, in the no material editor. So let's start off with a blank scene. So uh, just starting off, we just get a basic vertex shader. Uh, starting off, we just get a basic vertex shader. Um, yeah, nothing fancy here. We're not gonna be doing too much with it. Uh, the fragment shader is the real gem here. So if you're, uh, as you've learned in uh, David and Jason's introduction to the Node Material Editor, our vertex shader controls how our vertices are displayed. The fragment shader controls how we shade those vertices, or shade those uh, the, the fragments on screen created by those vertices. So right now we're just feeding it the color of plain gray, and let's just get rid of that because we will not be needing it. Um, so. Let's start off with our diffuse shader. Um, the two-tone tune shader, it's uh, very simple. So we have a diffuse color, which is the lit portion, and we have a dark portion, which is the unlit color. Um, so we get the lit portion by figuring out just how much the light is showing on our model. Um, so as you can see with these examples here, just D depending on where the light's coming from, we have a hard cutoff on whether or not we're lighting the model or we're not lighting the model. Um, so we need to figure that out by calculating our world normal. Um, if you're familiar with the Fong shader, uh, the, the, the Fong shader calculation for diffuse, you're right in the same area. So we want to get our world normal. And this is representing the normal vector of the model at for each position. Uh, because this is a shader, it's being processed on every pixel being rendered on screen in this fragment. Um, so we know the world normal. Uh, this is the normal vector pointing off the model. We're going to notate this as n. And we calculate just how much that light is uh, uh, pointing in the same direction as our world normal. Uh, so we need to get the light direction. Light direction is retrieved from the uh, light information. And so we can add that into the scene like so. This needs our world position here. And we can get the light direction here. It's a vector three. So let's normalize it. just to make sure that we're getting a length one vector. Um, if you're familiar with the dot product, uh, it multiplies the, the cosine of the angle between the vectors with the magnitudes of each vector. So just calculate, just uh, factoring out that math, if we use two vectors of length one or two normalized vectors, then the dot product will just give us their cosine. So let us get the XYZ portion of this world normal. We don't need W for this. So we'll use our vector splitter, and we just want to split off n. Uh, I just want to split it off to be the format of a vector three. And so we have L here, and we're going to call this L normalize. And this is n. Oh, we need to normalize this as well. So let's normalize this vector to make sure that it is of length one. And finally, let's get their dot product.
So, in working with the shader, um, it's very useful to debug um, by just plugging in your intermediate values and interpreting what colors get shown in your fragment shader. It's extremely useful for doing that. So let's do that by using a vector merger. We're going to merge out the n.l. Also, uh, good programmers always label their variables. So we're going to just connect the XYZ of the vector merger, and this output vector is now our new fragment color. And boom, look at that. We have diffuse lighting. So as you can see, um, the more that our surface normal points towards our light, in this case, the light is facing straight up. Let's change to another shape that'll also help us understand. So the light is directly above our model, shining down. And the more that our model is facing towards the light, the more that, uh, the brighter that we color it. Um, so that's all well and good for real shading or uh, photorealistic shading, but we don't really want that. Um, the point of tune shading is to exaggerate. It's either lit or it's unlit. There's not really much in between. But of course, uh, there's different. There's a, there's no definitive way of making a tune shader. This is a two-tone tune shader, so we're just lit unlit. If you're making a three-tone tune shader, you'd have you might have some intermediate values. But the essence of a tune shader is that quantization of values. So it's a hard cutoff between different levels of light, and that's how you uh, essentially uh, lose your surface information, make things look more flat, make things look more stylized. So. Uh, the way that you do that in the in the node material editor is using the step node. Um, you can also use the smooth step node to get a bit less of a, a sharp effect, but le we're going for a basic effect here. So we're just gonna use the regular step node. Um, and what we want to do is we're going to quantize our n dot l, and if it's greater than our edge value, and in this case our edge value will be zero. So let's grab a float input. This is our diffuse cutoff. And we'll use that as our edge. And now if we replace, also let's go back to our sphere. Spheres are great for viewing this. Um, we're going to replace the X with our new quantized value. And you can already see as we replace these values, you, we start to get a harder shading. And so now we have a hard lit, unlit surface. Great. Um, now this is all well and good if you like game, uh, if you remember, and I'm starting to date myself, uh, there was a game for the Nintendo Wii about a decade ago called Mad World. And that is one great example of uh, very stylistic 3D rendering. Um, I'd love to show you some in this video, but uh, yeah, it's not, not for kids. <laughs> um, but there's plenty of other great games that share styles like this. Uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, of course, that's our base model that we're going off for the series. Um, there's also uh, the other Zelda game that came out even earlier, Wind Waker, used a cell shaded style of outlines. Um, Loco Roco, I believe, is also a 3D game that's tune shaded to 2D. Uh, it's about like a ball rolling around stuff. I could be totally wrong on that, but that was the impression I got. And my personal favorite, there's an anime that came out a while ago. It's called, um, uh, darn it. I can't remember. The name's not coming to me right now, but it has like two girls and they're all like flat shaded and they do a lot of video game parodies and it's only subbed. So if you know this, if you know the name of this anime, please put it in the comments. Um, but just giving you a lot of examples of uh, a lot of great medium that uses this shading style. Um, so we have our step function here. Let's rename this to be, this is our quantize uh, lighting or diffused lighting intensity intensity perfect okay and now uh, we have a hard white and black but we can add some extra color to this so um how do we brighten up that dark part well we add some ambient light to the scene so we can do that using a color input so we'll add in a color three. This is our ambient light. 
And what we want to do is we have our diffuse light. We will scale this by our diffuse light color. And for this, we'll just use a stopgap input color. But if you want this to work with the lights in your scene, you can always use your light color. Uh, I'm not doing that right now because I want full control over the colors that I use. So let's use a scale. And this will allow us to scale our diffuse color by our lighting intensity. And this will give us our diffuse lighting calculation. Finally, we just want to add in our ambient light color calculation to this. And that will be our output color for our fragment. So we can do that using an add node. Drag that in here. And let's add our ambient to our diffuse. And finally, this is our output. Ta-da, it's completely white. Um, that's because we have so much ambient light, it's flooding the scene and everything's being white. So let's make this really dark. You don't need a lot of ambient color. And as you can see, now we have our two-tone shader. Uh, we have a hard lit unlit. Um, the inside of this is lit just due to how we calculate our cutoff. If we increase the cutoff, it will be not lit. We have, oh, this is a plane, so it's always lit. And my favorite, the shader ball. You can really get a nice view of how this shader uh, will affect more complicated geometry. So, if you like this video, please go ahead and add a like. Uh, stay tuned for parts two and three where I go over how we add our specular highlight and our rim lighting effect. Um, so, thank you and have a nice day.